Hi guys, I created this very short video for you to help you better understand the diagrams and the drawings that I was creating for you in the Blade Anatomy Manual. So I was improvising this very fast on my uh, training dummy. We have here the heart, we have the liver, we have the trachea, the pipe, and in the lateral simulating with these tubes we have the carotid arteries. Also left and right we have the subclavian arteries that are continuing of course here I cannot show you with the axillary artery, branchial artery. The aorta is on the middle, that down it's splitting left and right on the leg, going with femoral arteries and so on. Uh, very important to understand that in tactical combat system, we are using the blade only in that situations in which we must use deadly force to eliminate the target, to incapacitate the target, to protect our life, our families, or, our, or the people around us. So we don't stay in that moment to cut muscles, to cut tendons. We must strike fast, precise zones on the body that can incapacitate the target, that they are creating shock to the target and is stopping from the main action. I want to underline that uh, this, what you see here, uh, are not reproducing 100% the proportions of the uh, human uh, organs and human anatomy uh, what you are seeing yeah it's only like an idea that is making you better understand uh, what i want to uh, show you so we have the trachea we have the carotid arteries i remind you that the trachea is a shock zone if i am hitting if i am penetrating if i am thrusting with my blade inside the trachea breaking that trachea it's normally that the target, it will have a shock and the reaction, it will be, imagine if you are taking a punch very hard in the trachea, what is your reaction, how you are going with the hands because you are hitting that, the trachea. Imagine now the blade that is thrusting and penetrating that trachea, it will be a shock strike that it will stop the target for a limited amount of time from his main actions. We have on the lateral, the carotid arteries that normally in they are deep inside and they are protected very good by this uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle on the lateral you also can touch it when you put on your neck yeah so it's not so simple you are making this move slashing laterally and you will cut the carotid artery the carotid artery if you want to severe i repeat to you it's better that you are if i have this obake sirkati uh, knife with the one edge, a sharp edge, yeah, I am thrusting, entering with the knife, penetrating the trachea, entering inside with the edge, sharp edge, orientated, for example, to the right uh, side, in such a way that after, when I am inside, and I'm making this movement, yanking, dragging my blade, slashing inside, I will severe also that uh, carotid artery. We have the soup, Clavian artery. It's a very, very uh, good spot anatomical because if you are coming from up down under the clavicula, behind the clavicula, entering down, you will severe this uh, artery. And it's very hard to stop the bleeding if you have a subclavian artery severed because it's positioned inside between the clavicula and the first rib. It's like a sandwich and you cannot apply so good pressure. Normally this is making in the hospital uh, by professional. It must open, uh, make open uh, the chest. Of course, when I am going to, last, to severe this artery, I can also, if I'm coming in the diagonal with my knife, going from up down, entering, lacerating, severe that artery, I continue my movement if I have a very uh, good length like blade, and I can stab the heart, yeah? Of course, when you are hitting, even if the, this blade is showing like this, the distance, again, I repeat, they are not, it's not respecting 100% the, uh, the uh, proportions, uh, because of the shock, because of the power it, what we, that you hit, the body will compress, so you can hit that heart, yeah? So I, when I severe this uh, subclavian artery, I can also continue going in diagonal with my blade and trusting the heart. The heart can be accessed from the, this way or from the, for example, from the lateral, from the left side of the target, between the intercostal spaces, 
to the 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6 intercostal space going with the blade of course here I must have also the length of the blade it must not be a short blade and I will reach just hard when I penetrate with the knife my blade must not be in this position must be flat because I must enter between these intercostal spaces normally when you are hitting the heart I am taking back also the knife from there because if it's remaining stuck between the ribs or I let the tennis is remaining in the heart that blade is functioning like a seal for the wound and many victims that they were arriving to the hospital with this type of injury and having uh, the blade there were saved were alive because the blade was functioning as a seal to the wound so if i'm thrusting i'm taking also the blade out it's existing the risk to be blocked between the ribs the blade of course but if you have a very large blade and you use it like this in this situation even if i'm hitting with this kind of knife on the lateral the ribs are elastic when you are breathing if you are putting a, a finger between your ribs when you are having the air out from your lungs and then you breathe in you will see that they are enlarged yeah they are that space is becoming bigger so the chances that is remaining blocked there this kind of type of knife there is uh, they are low yeah but a big knife can be stuck there in their cases then another uh, position in which can be accessed the heart it's under the rib cage yeah so uh, under the rib cage where it uh, we have the sternum the base of the sternum you go from up down with force in the diagonal uh, towards the left shoulder and you will arrive to that you will penetrate that heart even again if the blade if you put it it will not look like it's touching when you are giving with very much power that will compress the body and you enter in the heart we have after the liver this is not a shock uh, strike because many are surviving even if they are stabbed in the liver but the problem with the liver is that it's uh, having uh, it's a, a, a source it's keeping there a lot of blood and if you are stabbing it can have massive bleeding because we have also if you are seeing this in the middle is the aorta yeah that is a very important blood vessel and if it's uh, severe it will create a massive bleeding yeah again if i am entering for example making after i'm giving a shock strike to the trachea thrusting that trachea giving a shock strike and then i make i want to make an evisceration for example entering with my blade inside at the level of the belly and then slashing laterally all the belly putting the guts out the not only that if the intestines are exiting out nobody can fight with his guts outside but also i can if i am entering trusting deep enough and i slash i can uh, uh, severe also this aorta yeah okay here in, you must visualize and understand that all these are inside the body very deep and it's not so easy to make this kind of strikes but what i want to underline is that all the time we must identify the shock spots the shock zones on the body so when we are thrusting when you are hitting that shock zones we know that we will stop the target for the initial uh, uh, attack or for the initial action for a limited amount of time so if i am going directly only to give to the sub uh, uh, sub uh, clavian artery so to lacerate for example in this side the subclavian artery that it will not be a shock i will create a big damage a massive hemorrhage but it the target can still fight for a limited amount of time until of course it will lose conscience and after a few minutes of course he's losing the uh, the amount of blood that leads to his death but he's not stopped in that moment yeah he can continue stabbing you he can continue do other kind of activities but if i am trusting that trachea it's one and i am precise in my in my heat it's 100 percent stop from his main action the same if i am trusting with power in the eye entering with that knife in the eye it will have the same effect yeah nobody can fight in that moment having a knife entering penetrating trusting the eye when you are trusting the eye is very important how you trust it because if you are trusting with a blade flat like this because of the shape of the orbit that is coming like a cone it's very possible and there are multiple clay cases in which they were stabbing like this and they were not uh, injuring the globe the eye yeah it was entering between the globe 
and globe of the eye and the orbit, the blade, yeah? This is the reason why if I want to stab to give shock to the target and I'm stabbing the eye, I'm going with the blade in this position so I am entering in that eye, entering inside and then I can also <coughs> make this movement back so I create the uh, most damage because this is my goal. Another very important thing, again I repeat, if we are targeting uh, these zones, we must check for the shock zones. As I say, I am thinking that I am lacerating, I am only cutting, I don't know, a carotid artery or a uh, subclavian artery or an axillary uh, artery or the femoral artery, but the target is not stopped in that moment. So I need shock stripes, eyes trachea, heart, kidneys, yeah, so this kind of zones are creating a shock to the target and it's stopping from the uh, immediate action. You must understand that all these strikes, trachea, heart, uh, doesn't matter, uh, kidneys, that even if they are a shock zone, if you have a target that let's say it's an active shooter, it's a, I don't know, he has a fire weapon, he's shooting and you are in the right place at the right moment and you have the luck that you are behind so you can make some action or make some technique. Again, this is a scenario from Hollywood movies. I only want to give you an idea how it's functioning in the body if uh, you will uh, stab or strike in these kind of situations. I repeat that the perfect and the most efficient weapon is a fire weapon. So if you have a fire weapon, you will use that fire weapon to eliminate the target, not taking the blade. But there are countries, for example, where you are not permitting to carry like a civilian a fire weapon. So maybe the only choice that is remaining is a blade. And in all these situations, you must understand that if you stab all the parts of the body, the body because of the pain and I stab the trachea, I stab the eye, I stab uh, the heart, it will contract, he will clinch his fist, he will push more on the trigger and continue if it's an automatic fire weapon or something to push that fire weapon. So this you must have in the mind, the only part on the body that you can strike and it's shutting down all the system immediately is the brainstem. This is the reason why the snipers are shooting and want to uh, uh, blow up that part of the brain, the brainstem, so it's shutting down all. In rest, it will clinch, doesn't matter where you are stabbing, if it's a fire weapon, he will continue to push that trigger, trigger because of pain. So you must have in mind these kind of things. In rest, if we talk about um, arm with a blade or something else, when I'm striking, I'm going for uh, shock strikes. I'm not going for these kind of zones that are dangerous or I are um, I don't know, uh, inflicted some uh, uh, damage that can be little but not in that moment. I am needing to stop the target in that moment.